Now we're going to see how to take the derivative of two um, somewhat tricky functions. I know that using the derivative that, that using this formula, this derivative formula is very tedious and long, but stay with me. Um, I think from two lessons from now, uh, we'll take a look at we're learning a shortcut that will greatly speed things up. But for now, um, we're stuck using this um, this long fashioned long, windy, um, derivative formula. It's not that bad, though. Once you get tangled, it's not that bad, so... Anyway, okay, let's start. So, f of x is equal to... Okay, 4x plus 1 square root of that. So, how do we find the derivative? So, the first step is to rewrite To rewrite the derivative formula, and then just plug it in, right? So we're going to, instead of writing f, we're going to actually write in the formula. So this would be the square root of 4 times x plus delta x plus 1 minus square root of 4x plus 1 all over delta x. Oh yeah, and don't forget to write this part, the limit part. Ah. Don't forget to write this limit part because it is important. So we see that we have something minus something and we're sort of stuck here. We don't really know what, next to, what to do next. Well, a minus b, we could just flip it and a plus b. So, and then if we multiply a minus b times a plus b, we get a squared minus b squared. Ah. Right, so let's multiply both the top and the bottom by this thing, so we're going to have a plus sign here. Uh, I don't know if I can squeeze it in. Plus 1. Plus, right? No, I can't. Okay. And then same thing for the bottom. And sorry about that. Um, you know what? Uh, I'll rewrite everything. Okay, so once we do that, plus sign here, right? Then we can simply write a squared minus b squared. So the radicals lift and the numerator. So that's going to equal the limit of delta x as, as sorry, the limit as delta x approaches zero of 4 times x plus delta x, okay, plus 1, minus, don't forget your parentheses here, okay, so, 4 minus x, remember to distribute this negative sign, where have we got a mistake, okay, delta x times, okay, 1, same thing, we're not going to distribute it. Uh, this thing, and you'll see why. Alright, so we'll distribute the 4 and the negative sign. So 4x and negative 4x cancel, plus 1, minus 1, they cancel. So what do you have left? We have 4 times delta x in the numerator, and delta x times this thing in the denominator. We can cancel out the delta x's. So what we have left is the limit as x approaches 0 of 4 over the square root of 4 times this quantity, plus 1, all right, so plus 4x plus 1. Right, now we're going to take the limit. So uh, delta x is going to approach 0, so this term is going to drop out because it's going to approach 0. So then what we have left is 4 over uh, 
4 over the square root of 4x plus 1, plus the same thing. So it's essentially going to be 4 over 2 times the square root of 4x plus 1, 2 over the square root of 4x plus 1. Hey, okay, that's our answer. So this is going to be our um, derivative. Okay, so that's the derivative. So now let's take a look at the graphs. And you know what? They match up. So voila, there we go. So as you can see here, um, the f uh, this is uh, first, this is the function, and this is the derivative of the function. So that's kind of hard to see using this thing back here, so let's do that. But once you see that, um, you can see that initially it's really steep. Okay, so initially it's really steep. Therefore, the derivative is pretty big, but as we move in this direction, the slope becomes less and less steep. It's still positive though, right? So this the derivative still stays above the x-axis, but it's getting less and less steep, All right? So because the derivative is getting less and less steep, sorry, because the slope is becoming less and less steep, the derivative is becoming smaller and smaller. Yeah. Now for our next example. Right. Um, okay, so it's going to be f of x is equal to 3 over 2x plus 1. Alright? So, let's find the derivative of that. So it's going to be right out the limit direction, right out the limit uh, definition again. And plug in the actual function. That's kind of tedious. Okay, um, so hang on. Um, 3 over 2 times x plus um, x plus delta x plus 1, right? Minus 3 over 2x plus 1 all over delta x. Um, whoop, I just shook the table there. Just shook the table. Um, but anyway, back to this thing. What we do now is we multiply both the top and the bottom by this. All right, so we're going to try to cancel out all like terms. No, we're not canceling out like terms, sorry. Um, we're rewriting this as one big fraction. So we're multiplying both the top and the bottom by this and this. Okay, and okay, so we did that. So now it's going to come out to be, let me see, uh, so, okay, so this all over x times this. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, we need to distribute. I know it's not a lot of fun, but uh, that's, that's how these questions work. 6x plus 3 minus, okay, uh, 6x minus, remember to distribute this negative sign here, minus, um, what is this, 6 delta x plus 3 all over, let's think again, okay, Whew. now what did I do wrong, this should be a negative sign here. Yeah, this should be okay. How did I know? Well, it did cancel out, right? I was looking at pot plus three and plus three again. No, it has to be plus three and negative three. So I took a look, but well, I did something wrong, and then I changed it. So plus three and negative three cancel out. Positive six x and negative six x cancel out. Uh, okay, so we have a delta x and delta x here. 
Right, so the only term left in the numerator is negative 6x. Uh, sorry, negative 6 delta x. So we can cancel these out. So the new uh, unit becomes negative 6 over uh, this huge bottom part. Alright, so now we're going to take the limit. So as delta x approaches 0, this thing is going to drop out and become 0. So what we have left is 2 times x plus 1 times 2 times x plus 1. So that's basically uh, 2x plus 1 squared. And that's the answer. Negative 6 over 2x plus 1 tired bottom squared. Oof. So let me see. Uh, is this it? Yep. So this is... The graph, let me draw it in. Now notice as you would expect, there's an asymptote at x equals negative one half. See there's an asymptote at that point. F of x is equal to, sorry, you probably couldn't see that. Plus one, same thing over here. So, what do we notice about this graph? Does, does the derivative make sense? Well, let's take a look here. So initially the slope is very small. It's slightly negative. And as we go along, it becomes even steeper and steeper and steeper. So it's very negative here. So let's take a look here. This is a derivative. Um, let me split the two graphs here. There we go. So initially it's not very large but it's going to become smaller. So as the slope becomes steeper, the derivative is going to be larger in a negative direction. So it's negative. And over here, the slope is extremely steep. So, let me see. There we go. The slope is extremely steep, so we expect a very large negative derivative, which we do. Okay, and then there's a break. There's an asymptote, and then right here immediately, we again have a very steep, very steep, um, maybe better. We have a very steep, that's not, there you go. Okay, here. We have a very steep slope, so it's a large negative number, and then slope gently goes to zero. There you go. Notice that it never reaches zero because it's an asymptote. So this line going to hug the x-axis. So the derivative is going to hug the x-axis really tightly, but never touch it. Alright, so those are two examples.